Hello, this is Webster from my Therapy Garden YouTube channel. We're playing in the dirt, help to take away my hurt. Today we're going to have a tour of the house plants. Okay, so the first one you're looking at is a peace lily. A nice peace lily. I we know the peace lily flower like this, with this, these white flowers. Go the other way. And that's a peace lily. Peace lilies are a good hair purifying plant according to NASA and they're very easy to take care of. And this is my living room. So I have a peace lily and I have another peace lily in the other corner. Produce lots of oxygen <laughs> for the living room, right? <laughs> okay, then we have an anthurium in this vase right here is an anthurium struggling a bit all your house plants matter of fact all flowers and a whole will not be perfect at all times so right now this anthurium is struggling but um i'll work on her and hopefully she will survive and rebound here we have a big ficus a fiddle leaf ficus and of course, ficus are like the rage now. You see them on Instagram a lot and on uh, YouTube looking good. But ficus, I think you call them fiddlies, ficus for a reason. They're very finicky. If you move them around, they start dropping leaf. If they don't get enough sunlight, they'll drop leaf. If you get direct sunlight, they'll scorch and of course drop leaf. So you have, to, they're very temperamental. So you have to make sure you just water it maybe once every two weeks or check the soil, just tip your finger in the soil to about an inch down. And if it's dry, then you give it some water. That's the fig leaf ficus. Then we have a Monstera deliciosa. These are cottage cheese leaf. No, Swiss, Swiss cheese leaf. Yeah, Swiss cheese leaf. This big leaf. Of course, hair producer again to purify the hair. Lots of oxygen. Behind it is a rubber tree. A rubber tree. And of course, your um, house plant don't have to live in soil. You can have a talansia, or commonly called a hair plant, which require no soil, no water. So it's a hair plant. But once a week, or once every two weeks, you just dip it in some water for a little bit, and that's it. Survive on the hair, a hair plant. A good friend of mine gave me this coconut face here that she got from one of her travels overseas. And um, I thought it would be the perfect thing for an ear plant. So it looked like that little smiley face of hair. Okay. Here we have a pathos. Pathos are great house plant. They are hardy, require very little attention. Of course, they can go weeks without water. And if you love it too much and give it too much water, they will still survive. They're very forgiving. Okay. And that's a pathos. The Japanese said that a golden pathos, if you touch the leaves of a golden pathos, then it will improve your mood and your health. Now, I don't know what a golden pathos is. So this is, for me, this is close enough to a golden pathos. So every day I stroke the leaf for good luck and good health. 
we have a prayer plant here right above it astromanthi also called Chinese evergreen but this kind is a red kind and of course this is a dumb cane a big dumb cane right there we have another prayer plant and we'll make a video about a prayer plant and it's called a prayer plant because at night the leaves curl up as if coming together to pray and in the daytime the leaves will actually turn towards the sun just like a sun worshiper so it's a calathea, calathea called prayer plant right behind the prayer plant we have a croton and this croton is struggling a bit like i said all your house plant not going to be perfect but um, for my croton, I always take the croton out in the summertime outside, put them outside on the porch so they can get sunlight and rain and all that. And they love that. So I'm pretty sure this one will survive nicely. On the breakfast table, I have my exotics. Echeveria right there, Echeveria, looking like a cabbage. Thick leaves. And my cactus. And I get this cactus at Home Depot. So I got this uh, kind of grayish or blue cactus there. And then I went to Lowe's and I saw this one, which is green. So I got this one at Lowe's. The green so I now have a green and a blue fan leaf cactus. And of course, it's a small seagull palm right there. So th these are my exotics. For me, succulents, I don't do well with succulents, but I have these four right here because I tend to overwater <laughs> than underwater. <laughs> so succulents, of course, don't like that because they store their water. Over in this corner, a spider lily with all the young pups that it have there, spider lily. Again, spider lily is another hair purifying plant according to NASA. My Sansevieria starfish. Trying to get these string of pearls to come back. Hopefully they'll survive and rebound. They'll keep it in the same pot as the Sansevieria starfish. On the table are my Sansevieria. My rhino, bird nest, spear, and braided sense of area. Going up by the front door, got more croton. And this big dracaena. A friend of ours was moving and she said that uh, this plant was too big for her to take to her new place and she know that you know we like plants so she gave this big Justina to us have it right there by the stairs it's a beautiful plant beautiful plant Next, we have another croton. Mm. 
in the dining room. We've got a ZZ plant. And ZZ plants are very easy to take care of. They're easy to grow and easy to take care of. You can just cut one of the, uh, I guess, stalk or one of the leaf, stick it in the ground, and it grow. You know, it's that easy. It doesn't require a whole lot of attention either. You water it once every two weeks or so, and the ZZ plant will be happy. In this corner here, another croton. I keep the crotons inside just winter and spring. By summer, I put them out on the front porch so they can get some sunlight. Another ZZ plant. Get some uh, yellowing of a few of the leaves. It's too easy, you just cut it off. It will quickly rebound. This just seen as called Hawaiian tea or Hawaiian Thai. T I, Hawaiian Thai. You like the light right there at the front? I have another Calathea right here. Right by the front window. And then Aloe vera. Aloe vera is good to have inside also, air purifying plant. And just like your um, Sansevieria, it produces oxygen in the absence of sunlight. So during the day and during the night, it will produce oxygen. And of course, it will um, use carbon dioxide from us and it will put out oxygen. So it's another good plant to have inside and a great plant to keep in the bedroom. And of course, there are medicinal uses for aloe vera. A poinsettia. It's a poinsettia that was given to us on Christmas from our sister-in-law, Marlene, gave this to us. And this poinsettia is still doing good. Get lots of sunlight. Just have to water it every day because it's a thirsty plant. <laughs> and of course, a ZZ plant here. Okay guys, so just a quick tour of some of the house plant. Okay, and we have to do a part two of this because I have more plants upstairs and also in the bedroom. So we'll have a part two and show you other house plants that we have. Okay, so again, if you're new to this, um, to this channel, please hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are posted. And of course, please share it with all your friends and on all your social media platforms. Give a thumbs up and leave a comment at the bottom. This is Webster from My Therapy Garden. We're playing in the dirt. Help me take away my hurt. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.